So every time I go to Asia, you know, I kind of secretly judge them based off of their food because I want to find ways to point out how they are definitely not as good as Korean. Damn it, Vietnam. So this is going to be one of my research trips. Of course, I'm going to have a little fun, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now, Asia is a very complicated place, but you have two major spheres of influence. You have the Indosphere, or places that fall under the influence of India, or at the very least, the Indian subcontinent. And you have the Sinosphere, or places that fall under China's influence. And Southeast Asia is kind of like where these two spheres of influence collide. And although this country is way more noticeably Sinosphere, they've always kind of been like the weird, humid, tropical outlier that didn't quite exactly fit in with the rest of the Sinosphere world. It's a place where folk beliefs are pretty strong, and they somehow find a way to creep their way into every part of daily life. It's a place where every dish has fish sauce and a slight tangy flavor where everything tastes just right. It's a place where motorcycles and coffee are king. Eh, I don't have to explain it to you guys. You already know where I am. It's Iceland. City, aka Saigon. Yes, it's totally acceptable to call this place Saigon, the old name. Off record, it's unofficially acceptable to call this place the Bitexco building, the Avengers building, because look at it, it's the Avengers building. And yes, I know there's a lot more to Vietnam than just Saigon. There's the north, there's the central, there's the Mekong Delta. I know, I know. But my time is very limited. I'm, ti I'm kind of on a time crunch. I only have five full days to learn as much as I can. And a lot of my subscribers said if you're going to start in Vietnam, this might be a good place to start. So here I am with mom. And of course, the first thing I'm gonna do, get coconut coffee. Or should I get salt coffee? Or should I get egg coffee? Oh, they're all so good. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. So fun fact, every coffee comes with these little plastic slings. That's because they assume you might be riding a motorbike. And if you do, every motorbike comes with a little hook you can hang your stuff on. Ingenuity. So one thing you'll definitely notice in Vietnam, all of the curbs slope upwards into the sidewalk. And that's because they expect motorbikes to use the sidewalks. So they give them easy access. So sidewalks are pretty much just an extension for pedestrians and uh, motorbikes. So yeah. chicken with a tiger drinking beer. So I put up a post on social media asking if any of my subscribers living here would like to meet up. And with that, I grabbed my street stool, parked up a spot on the sidewalk and got ready to sit down with my second coffee and chat with my first subscribers, Brad and Bao. Creation myth of Vietnam. Explain, Bao. Well, it's not, it's not too much of a myth, but they think that uh, the Vietnamese people believe that they are descendants of a people from the north in China that migrated south and so they use this symbol to like symbolize their kind of origin and yeah. these are the people migrating or something yeah these these are supposed to be representation of those people migrating you can see that there's also with represent, elephants <laughs> yeah war elephant to like uh, represent like all the time that they fought back from the invading northern chinese army so uh, those are the trung sisters <laughs> yeah that's the representation of the trung sister usually with two war elephants you grew up with this right yeah yeah i see i see this everywhere yeah, in textbooks, you know, in propaganda, in movies, on official TV channels, on decoration like this. This is Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say. Yeah, I would say. Modern Vietnam is a country that is moving forward as fast as it possibly can. So if I could boil down Vietnam to just one word, practical. Because, you know, the history of Vietnam, there's been so many conflicts and problems, but they're always trying to find the best way forward in life. And, you know, people are always willing to do what it takes for themselves and for their country. Uh, it's like that quote from Ho Chi Minh, what was it? Like <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, Brad learned how to speak Vietnamese, which is pretty cool. In any case, it was pretty evident that this was a very busy city made up of 24 districts and 19 main inner districts. So much to see, hear, smell, and yes, even taste. With that, I hopped on Brad's motorbike and he brought me to what is probably the most famous food stall alley in all of Saigon to get a taste of what I was getting into. All right, here with Mr. Henry and Brad once again. Brad, where are we? We are at Joha Hotiki, which is one of the most famous uh, food streets in Ho Chi Minh City, and there's a lot of great food here. All I know is they got horseshoe crabs here. <laughs> Look at this guy. I've only seen pictures of this water coconut or toddy palm, I believe. And uh, I'm gonna try it for the first time. Water coconut. Pretty good, I like it. We're eating some uh, ban lop sao. Ban lop sao. And it's uh, fat noodles with God knows what else in it. Let's go, three, two, one. Oh, so good. It was at this moment that I realized both Brad and Henry spoke Japanese. So they ended up speaking Japanese to each other. Academic techna kotoba ga chotto I noticed whenever I meet my subscribers, they usually tend to be very talented or smart, so at this point, I just kind of have high standards for them. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Today, mom was gonna tag along and this was gonna be a first for her. For her whole life, she has never stepped foot in either a Hindu or Buddhist temple. And there was a Hindu temple not far from where we were staying in District 1. So we decided to check it out. Although forms of Hinduism have historically existed, especially in the south part of Vietnam for a long time, it was revived more recently by Indian laborers that were brought in by the French during colonial times. And it was cool witnessing it here in Vietnam. Afterwards, we decided to hop in a taxi and ride over to District 2 to see Min Dang Quang Buddhist Institute. Ready to go, mom? You ready? This place is stunning. It is a multi-leveled, multi-pagoda complex with a central temple and four massive corner tower pagodas that hold special quarters like a library and living quarters for the clergy. It lies just on the outskirts of the residential apartment complexes with very busy, fast-moving traffic, giving off a unique view of tradition juxtaposed to modernity. All right, Braddy is here, and we are at the top of the library tower. Look at the view. <laughs> You know what I find fascinating is that the Vietnamese language is written in the Latin alphabet, but they somehow figured out a way to Asian calligraphy it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and on special days, they offer free vegetarian dishes to the community that visits. So of course, why not? Hey, mom. <laughs> All right, so uh, Brad, what do you have here? I have my motorbike. And uh, where are we going? We are going to Bati Ho Temple. District 5. District 5. Bat Tien Hao Temple, one of the most popular ones, and uh, let's just check it out. Now this is where we start reaching the folk side of Vietnam's faith-based dynamics. Even before entering, you can see the distinct iconography carved into the exterior of the building. Bat Tien Ho Temple is one of the oldest temples in Saigon, built by the Cantonese community in 1760, dedicated to Mazu, the goddess of the sea, a faith that has roots in South China and Taiwan. The moment you step in, the level of intense detail and ritual is immediately flashed before your eyes. The shrines and figures and prayer cards, the pillars, the spiral-shaped incense coils hanging from the ceiling, and the massive clay pots holding incense sticks. This is the most incense-filled place I've ever been in my life. <laughs> After that, it was back on Brad's motorbike to head off to one place I was very interested in seeing. I've read about this unique religion before. It is very distinctly Vietnamese, specifically South Vietnamese, Gao Tai. You want something authentically Vietnamese, you gotta check this out. A Gao Tai temple. It's a unique kind of fusion hybrid religion that was invented in the 1920s that fuses Buddhism, Confucianism, Taoism, and Roman Catholicism, and every single temple has the Eye of God, or the All-Seeing Eye. Finally, back on Brad's motorbike, and off to a cathedral. It's a war! against scooters and cars. Yes, Vietnam has a small community of Christians, mostly Catholic as well. I've seen many cathedrals, but this was the first time I had seen one with such an East Asian aesthetic, with temple-like elements in everything from the entrance gateway, the roof, the columns, the stained glass. Now, faith, or at the very least, spiritualism, has played a very interesting role in Vietnam. And it's really interesting when you see something like this, the statue of Mary with traditional incense and ancient calligraphy. Nowhere else can you find anything like this. 
Overall, there's a sort of overarching sense of faith, or at the very least, faith-based ritualism in many parts of Vietnam, and you see it everywhere. Yep, just walk, just force your way. Just do it. <laughs> All right. No signs here. Come on, no signs. All right, today we go to Vung Tau. Oh, Vung Tau today, I'm taking this little ferry bus, or boat. So today is a boat trip. We're gonna take a ride from Ho Chi Minh, Saigon, to Vung Tau. It's all the way down the river, and uh, here's what the boat ride looks like. Now in Vung Tau, there was one specific thing I wanted to see. Actually, Brad discovered it, and I knew mom would probably kind of hate it, but I wanted to see it. How do you feel? Do you like the monkeys? No, I don't know. Don't really. <laughs> okay. Mad at me. <laughs> I'm gonna call him Godzilla. Come on, Godzilla, show him how it's done. Be a monkey. This guy knows how to be a monkey. Vung Tau is the closest and most popular beach destination for people usually living in Saigon. They do recommend you be careful with swimming though because the winds are known to be very strong, perfect for paragliding, but just be mindful and careful of the waves. And I will admit I was a little deterred from swimming in the ocean because I did notice quite a bit of plastic waste. I'm sorry, I know it sounds bad, but I have to just say it as it is based off of what I've observed. But otherwise, the city did have its charm. Like, seriously, charm. This is the weirdest ice cream truck I've ever seen. Check this out. It's a Pikachu mobile. There's like Lady Pikachu. There's like, and then there's like Pikachu making out with Raichu. <laughs> we took a local bus all the way back to Saigon and decided to get some dinner. Let's cross. We made it. <laughs> Halfway. All right, Mr. Brad, what do we got here? We got some gum dam, which is the uh, specialty in Saigon. Just a mixture of everything: meat, rice, egg, and fish sauce. Oh. Afterwards, I decided to check out Bui Vien Walking Street, the heart of Saigon's nightlife. This place is insane. So many neon lights, loud music blasting in your face, and street performers everywhere. But one of the most distinguishing traits is that the bars here serve nitrous oxide balloons, or laughing gas, which people inhale. Now, I researched these things, and you do have to be careful if you want to try them out. I did not, but yeah, I'm just saying I noticed they were here. I also noticed something else. So my friends want to treat me to snails, and um, they're taking me to this place. It's actually inside a person's house. I don't even know if it's like a registered commercial property, but we're doing it. <laughs> Just uh, cooking outside, and then you step in, and oh, there's the friends. There they are. Yeah, let's have snails. Okay, so we have oysters with, with cheese on top, clams with peanuts, <laughs> and spring onions. Oh, we're waiting for the snails. Okay, well, a lot of seafood, oh my goodness. Actually, now that I think of it, I don't think we ever got the snails. But anyway, afterwards, I was able to meet up with Geogra Peeps and Win and Hong, as well as Ryan. We went to an exclusive invite-only cafe where we were able to film some interviews for the episode, and it was a great experience meeting them. You'll get to meet them in the Vietnam episode. Otherwise, after that, it was time to explore the city just a little bit more with mom. As you know, my mom is an artist, so of course, the last thing she wanted to see was the Ho Chi Minh City Museum of Fine Arts, which has an amazing collection collection of national treasures that depict every era of Vietnamese history. Wait, so uh, Brad, what, what is this? It's a... Uh, let's oh, see, should translate it. Nước từ trường tình thế lục giác uh, water from hexagonal crystal field. Water from, it's magic water. I need magic water. I'm gonna get some. Give me that magic crystal water. I'm gonna drink some. I feel the Vietnamese power. 
It was the last day and mom wanted to go out to do some shopping at the famous Benton Market. And with the market comes a plethora of delicious exotic fruits. They're really good. Not bad. So in Southeast Asia, the fruit options are insane. And uh, here's a really re interesting one. This is breast milk fruit. We should have a not bad. Mm. Kind of has a little melony taste. As the day was coming to a close, these past five days have been amazing, and it's crazy to think we only got to see one small section of Vietnam, the South. It's busy, it's hectic, it's chaotic, but it's like a colorful, beautiful, organized chaos that the city offers, with its very distinct sense of identity. With the last few bits of my money, there was one last thing I wanted mom to experience before we left. I wanted her to see something that was just very Vietnamese. So we're gonna do something pretty cool. What are we doing today, Ryan? Uh, water puppet. Water puppet show. All right, let's check it out. Here, mom, I got this for you. I got that for you. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm gonna do is... <laughs> oh, we'll we have a lot of decorations around the house, why not? When I look back at this whole trip, I think, you know what? For five days, I think I did pretty well. I love big cities, but I also love seeing what gives a city its character. And clearly, Ho Chi Minh City has character. It has tradition. It has a vibrant sense of identity and customs. It has flavors and tastes that never seem to end everywhere you go. It has its quirkiness and funny moments. But best of all, it has the people that I was really honored to meet. It was time to head back and take everything I've learned to put it in the episode. Until the next time, stay cool, stay tuned.